Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be trying out some questionable soap hacks. Is this a soap making channel now, you may ask? It's kind of starting to feel that way. Now, in the past, we've tried recreating our fair share of bizarre clickbait hack videos, some beauty hacks, some fashion hacks, and some photo and video hacks that notably can help you fake that you have a Lambo to get chicks on Tinder. Gotcha. With overall pretty mediocre results. Hey, that wasn't so bad. And since then, though many bizarre hacks have come and gone, like the jean leg chair, the human hair eyeshadow brush, and the fixing a broken plate with milk, nothing has made me want to dive back into the hack world quite like these soaps. Cute, yummy looking, forbidden food soap. Now, as some of you may know, I've been drawn into the soap making world from my natural and overpowering desire to buy and smell fancy bath stuff. And I have in the past attempted to follow two different soap art tutorials where I made cold processed soap from scratch. It looks like an amateur yogurt land experiment. Okay. But it's not a fail. And one thing that's pretty notable about soap making is that there are a lot of steps. And though it can be really fun, it's not really known for being easy. Oh no. So when I stumbled upon a number of soap art hack videos from notable hack mafiosos like Blossom, Crafty Panda, Craft Factory, and Five Minute Crafts, I figured cute looking soap art in five minutes seems a little too good to be true. Especially when you see the kinds of things they're making, which range from, wait, I want that, to, well, there's no way that works, to, is that even good? What the hell is this? It's awful. It's so wrong. It's so wrong. And as we know, these crafty creatures do like to fib their way to get engagement with clickbait thumbnails, well-timed jump cuts where they can just cut away to a better looking result, and sometimes just straight up lying about stuff. Like this peanut butter charcoal crystal thing from 2018. Yeah, just a straight up lie. They just hid a crystal under there there and pretended it was formed by the peanut butter. Oh, this is horrible. It's just cold peanut butter that's slowly turning hot. So as a beginner soap maker and an intermediate clickbait hack hacker, I decided to take on three of these soap hacks myself to see if you can really hack your way to cute looking soap art or if it's all just a castle of baloney. Hold on, no, no. <laughs> So with that, let's get to hacking. All right. So let's dive right in to hack number one. Now this first hack comes courtesy of this Blossom video, though versions of it are seen in other videos as well. And in it, they show us how to transform a bar of soap into a cloud. Basically what you do is you take a bar of ivory soap and you put it in the microwave and that's it. And basically it sort of does like a CD and explodes. What? If you put a CD in the microwave, doesn't it explode? Maybe. I haven't seen a CD in years. Now this hack, though seemingly simple, does have some wow factor to it. But after such fake hack travesties as the aforementioned charcoal peanut butter ice crystal situation, yes, I am still salty about it. I feel played by Blossom. <laughs> I am very skeptical when it comes to these sciency hacks as to whether or not they're real or just straight up actual clickbait. So I guess my question here is, is this a thing? I say, let's try it. Oh, it's got like a lemony smell. That's what's gonna blow up. Is that you or is that the soap? That's the soap. Okay. <laughs> now they don't say for how long you should put the ivory soap in the microwave. Pop it. Pop. Lack and drop it. They pretty much give us no details at all. You guys will notice this as a theme throughout these soap hacks. Danny. Danny. But there are not a lot of specific instructions or measurements anywhere, which makes our life a lot harder. So I'm gonna guess 30 seconds. Okay. I just feel like longer than that might be dangerous for a first try, but I feel like shorter than that might not do anything. Oh, here we go. 
Now at first, there was not much action going on in the ol' MW. Okay, something happening? But then, as the temperature rose... Oh, 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 oh my god! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Whoa! It's happening! We saw the beginnings of a cloud bursting forth. Oh my god, and it's pungent. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is actually working. Oh my god. It's like the blob. Oh my god, it stinks over here. Yep, and... Voila! But though we got something to happen, ew! Clearly, 30 seconds was not enough time for the soap to really do its thing. It looks like it was wrapped in toilet paper and then dunked in the toilet. Yeah, I got TP'd. <laughs> is it hot? I don't know, touch it. Oh, yeah, it's weird. It's kind of fluffy. Oh, it is kind of like almost like a, a warm brownie. So after scraping it off of our microwave. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Why did I clean this microwave again? <laughs> we tried the process again, but this time with two minutes on the clock. All right, ready? Yeah. It's going in. Now, after doing some research, it seems like the trick behind this hack is that you have to use ivory soap specifically. Oh, it's happening. It's alive. It's happening. Because ivory soap has air pumped into it during the manufacturing process. Oh, wow. It looks like cauliflower. So when it's microwaved, the soap itself becomes soft and pliable, and the air inside the bar expands. Oh my god, Wait, Tyler. Wait, can you just address how big it's gotten all of a sudden? Oh my god, it just got really big. So Blossom was not full of BS on this one. Wait, what? What? Wait, what? This is actually a thing. Cause what are we Wait, at? is it still going? We still have a whole minute left. Leave it in there. But it's more of a simple science experiment than a hack. Man, that looks bulbous. It's really asymmetric also. Yeah, no, one side has just got all the booty. Meant to demonstrate how when you heat a gas, it will expand. Okay. <laughs> Oh what? my god. Oh my god, Tyler, it's on the side. It's on the sides of the microwave. Oh my god. Oh no, it's deflating. Wait, wait, really? Yeah, it's deflating. Watch it. Oh, it's like a giant marshmallow. It it's like a giant something. I'm gonna get like a spatula. Yeah, you better get that. We have a giant spatula for this. Should I get the giant spatula? Go get the giant spatula stuff. I'm trying to film it as it deflates. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. And landed. <laughs> I think that's the hack. Now, I do think it's a feather in Blossom's cap that this hack worked at all, but there are still some things about it that are not ideal. It does kind of look like a deformed croissant, but you know, I'm not sure that you can do much to control the shape. No. I think the soap will do what the soap will do. It also did a number on our microwave. Congratulations, we punked you. We, you got your cloud soap, but you wrecked your microwave. And it exuded a kind of strong smell as we zapped it. It really, I don't wanna say stinks, cause it's not like a putrid smell, but it's a very strong odor. So that's not great. Now, one other thing that's also up in the air with these hacks is if they actually work to wash your hands with or not. So we waited a day for the cloud to cool and then took it to the bathroom to test it out. You wanna break me off a piece of that cloud soap hack? All right, here we go. And kind of like the hack itself, I would say that it sort of worked. Oh. Like I was able to get some lather going, but there were some unexpected pitfalls. For instance, while setting, the soap had developed a very dry and brittle texture. I will say it's very fragile. It does almost feel like it's made out of like paper mache or something and was kind of crumbling everywhere. Oh yeah, see that comes up so easily. Oh wow. So it might just like leave a mess behind in your bathroom if you were to leave it in here and sort of like break off pieces every time you needed it. It's very flaky. And once in the water, sizable chunks of soap disintegrated in seconds. RIP cloud soap. Man, that was quick. So I guess it's kind of like bizarre, fragile, dehydrated liquid hand soap. It's astronaut soap. So overall, I would say that this hack does work, but once the fun, explodey experiment part is over, you're kind of left with a giant flaky mess. It's clear that this hack is more about the spectacle than the actual finished soap, and I think Blossom knows that. It was actually quite exciting though when it started to sprout. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm excited right now. All right, so with that, we're on to hack number two, the gummy bear soap hack. 
also from the same Blossom video. And the way this hack works is you add some dish soap, some gelatin, and some water into a bowl, then mix, pour, refrigerate, and boom, gummies. Now, jelly soap is a thing, like Lush sells it, and people do make it, so I know that this result is possible. And this gummy bear soap hack is everywhere, as a lot of these hackers have copied each other and made videos about it. So my question here is, could it really be this easy to produce a cute, jiggly, and desirable result? I guess we'll find out. So basically the first step is dish soap. And you just squirt like sort of four rounds of dish soap, right? Four? Now, like the last hack, this hack is very unspecific about the amounts of things. They do a little bit of a blossom jump cut. So like, it's not clear how many swirls they do, but I'm gonna go with four or five. Oh, wow, it just went. Okay, ready? Yeah. I guess it probably looks cooler to just squirt some dish soap in rather than actually measure it out. Hopefully that's enough. But it definitely causes some confusion, like with the gelatin here. Tyler did go through this video frame by frame to try and figure out like how much of each thing they were using. And we think based on the relative size of the measuring cup to their hand, that it is one tablespoon. Yes. Makes sense. Our best bet. There we go. All right, incoming. Oh yeah. And then finally, they add the water. Now they kind of just put two cups of water in, and we think it's two cups because of the same freeze frame method I mentioned earlier. We're pretty sure it's two cups. I'm actually very sure. We're very sure. Yeah, I enhanced that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but something deep in my lizard brain told me that like when you're making jello, you need boiling water. I guess they don't explicitly say their water is not boiling, but it's not like it's steaming or bubbling or seems warm whatsoever. It just seems like a normal two cup of water. So um, I'm a little nervous that that won't make jello, but you know, for the sake of this experiment, we are going to follow their instructions. Okay, and boom. And just see what happens. So per their tutorial, we mixed it all together and then poured. This is the gummy destiny. For some reason, these guys remind me of the little green guys from Toy Story. The claw. The bowl. Okay, so I guess that's how you do it. Now I'm gonna stick these guys in the fridge. Okay, all right, I'm coming. All right, welcome to Booty Town. Welcome to Booty Town. And then let them cool in there overnight. And then we will check back in and see if we made some gummy soap. Spoiler alert, things did not go well for us. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, they're liquidy. As I had feared, that is straight up liquid, the lack of boiling water had seriously inhibited the jello activation. I mean, it, it's... It's dishwater. <laughs> it's literally dirty dishwater. There were a couple that had somewhat congealed. That one's a little something. But they were overall a flop. I could try and get this one out. Oh, God. That is its head. Oh, yeah, put his head down. Oh, my God. It's like the end of a Saw movie. So clearly Blossom had lemon dust right off a cliff with their vague instructions. All right, there's that's the closest one. He's mostly headless Nick. <laughs> So the first issue I wanted to address was the obvious not boiling water, which it seems like, per the internet, you do actually need. My lizard brain did have something to say. So I found a DIY jelly soap recipe online that seemed pretty similar to the spirit of the original hack. And it called for one tablespoon of gelatin, two cups of boiling water, and one cup of soap. Ooh. Which I think is a lot more dish soap than I was using previously. But unfortunately for us, these did not turn out so good. Oh, hold on. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Maybe? Maybe? All right, this is what we got. It's pretty mangled. They were more solid. It's definitely not just liquid, which is good. That's a good thing. That's a win. But they were very weak. He can't sit up like in the video. Yeah, no, he definitely can't stand on his own. And very sticky. He's now stuck to the cutting board. Are you serious? Yeah, he's uh, completely stuck. Now, after trying to figure out where we went wrong, I realized the jelly soap recipe we had been following actually recommended a cup of liquid hand soap or body wash rather than the Blossom recommended dish soap. I feel like I just got slimed. And at the time, I didn't think it would make a difference. Feel my hand. Ew. <laughs> but it clearly did. I think dish soap 
is soapier, right? Yes. It's like more concentrated. Yeah. So clearly that didn't help us here. I think that's why this is so sticky. Do you want a high five? No. A hug? A handshake? I think I'll pass. Oh, ah! <laughs> So as a third attempt, we reverted back to Blossom's original recipe, using the measurements that we had guessed in attempt number one, but just using boiling water instead. And after sticking those in the fridge overnight, we were finally rewarded with some not too sticky, oh, 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 not totally liquid gummies. He's gonna backflip. And will he stick the landing? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. He's okay. Dude! He's not quite structurally sound enough to like sit up on his own. Okay. <laughs> he's a very devout bear, but he's not sticking to the cutting board and he is sort of blue. So they weren't quite video level gummies, but they were the best we got. The hack really emphasized almost a jiggle when you drop them, which like I don't know how they're achieving. A stand and jiggle. Yeah, it was almost like Night of the Roxbury. Also, the feet kept tearing off. Yeah, they're all feetless. Oh, I'm the foot destroyer. I don't really know what's going on here. Pouring out for the feet. Now, even though our final jellies were a little messed up, all right, that one had both feet, but its head is sawed in half. We took them to the bathroom for a hand wash test. Lather me up. All right, ready? Yeah. Here we go. He's going under. Which, to be honest, wasn't great. Oh, he's very slippery. Because the bear instantly got really slick and slimy, and it wasn't really sudsing at all. I'm going actually kind of hard right now. There might be a little bit of soap on my hand. It's not like completely soap-free, but it's more of a film than a lather. So it was kind of like rubbing a slightly soapy bit of phlegm. I think I rubbed his features off. It looks like I snotted in my hand. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh my God, he almost just fell down the drain. All right, I'm gonna put him down. So I would say that that was actually not a very satisfying hand wash experience. Now, I think the issue here is that this guy is more watery gelatin than actual soap. He looks like the mucus from Mucinex. But as we saw, the dish soap did not do so well in a larger quantity. And it seems like online, a lot of recipes that are trying to make a similar product use liquid body wash or liquid hand soap. So it might be that dish soap is the problem child ingredient and doesn't really work well with this kind of hack. I'm not even sure why they would opt for dish soap when liquid hand soap is just as easy to get, if not easier, especially since some of their hacky peers actually did use the right soap. So overall, this hack confuses me. It does seem like it could be this easy to make a jelly soap, but trying to follow Blossom's recipe is just gonna make your life harder. So with that nightmare behind us, we're gonna forge ahead to our next hack. And our third hack is a soap cinnamon roll hack also from our frenemy Blossom. Now this cinnamon roll was actually one of the first soap hacks that caught my eye, as I thought it seemed both cute and fun, and I feel like it represents a large portion of these soap hacks that try and emulate realistic foodstuffs, kind of like a um, forbidden food. The other notable aspect of this hack is that it seems pretty complex. Like I would call it more of a lengthy craft that requires some artistic ability and not a hack. Basically, we melt down like some quantity of white melt and pour soap base. Then we add some gold soap coloring, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla essential oil, which I don't think exists. I have vanilla oil and vanilla fragrance oil, but I think essential oil like means something specific. And I don't think that that happens with a vanilla bean, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> We mix that up, then we pour it out into a sort of aluminum foil rectangular mold, top it with some cinnamon, let it semi-harden, slice it down the middle with a pizza cutter, then roll each slice up until they make basically a cinnamon roll, and then top it with some almond oil and cinnamon glaze, and then as a finishing touch, drizzle it with some more white melt and pour soap base. Tired yet? <laughs> Things have escalated quickly. <laughs> Don't do that at home. But we're gonna try our best to make it work. 
Now, obviously, one big continuous hole in this video is that they don't share any specific measurements anywhere. So what we decided to do was just assign things quantities. Yes. So we could like at least operate in some world. So what I'm going to do first is chop up all my melt and pour soap base stuff. And we need some melt and pour for the actual roll itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. As well as a tad bit extra for the final drizzle. Dude, I am a melt and pour base cutting pro. For some reason, that sounded like a fishing thing. It's the bass. I'm like a ba bass pro shop. We also needed to prep our colorants for the base. Now, um, in this video, they use liquid gold soap coloring, but I could not find that freaking anywhere. So what I decided to do was to use a little bit of two different color blocks from brambleberry.com, <laughs> which some of you may remember as the website of YouTube Soap Queen Anne Marie, whose tutorials I've followed and whom I've also begun to stan. I pretty much buy anything that Anne Marie wants to sell me, I'll buy it. And once that's done, we can get to double boiling. Which we've never done before. Which we have never done before. <laughs> but we are doing today. But we are gonna do right now. And as a side note, double boiling this melt and pour took forever. Oh, something just moved, but I don't know if that's because I breathed on it. So I can only assume they did it for the aesthetic. Should we hair dry it from above? <laughs> I'm like, not really joking. Because microwaving melt and pour soap is way faster. All right, now it looks like glue sticks. This is glue stew. That said, once it was finally liquid, we added in our cinnamon. Oh my God, I just spilled cinnamon literally everywhere. Our color blocks and our vanilla oil. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's the right color, Saf. That smells awesome. It smells like Dunkaroos. I don't even know if those things are street legal anymore. All right, I feel like it looks pretty decent. I think we're ready to pour. My face is literally wet from the steam, but besides that, I'm feeling good. Also, we prepped our aluminum foil mold a bit earlier, just randomly estimating the dimensions of it based on how it looks in the video. Like that, basically? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then we poured. It's happening. Go for it. Spread that evenly. There's a lot of cinnamon at the bottom, but like, we're gonna ignore it. And after another round of cinnamon, oh yeah, this smells like Christmas, <laughs> we left our loaf to semi-harden. The ambiguity is really stressing me out, but yes. Now, I read online somewhere that it takes about three to four hours for melt and pour soap to fully harden. So I guessed it would take about an hour for semi. Boy, was I wrong. It's like 12 minutes later, and this thing is pretty much much hardened almost. <laughs> so um, we're gonna cut it now. There is cinnamon everywhere, but we're living. Unfortunately, even though we acted fast. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay. Okay, one is bigger than the other. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> we were too late. It's too hard and it's too thick. Yeah, it just broke. Just keep rolling, just keep rolling. And our house of cards came crashing down. <laughs> There's no way that's right. That's so wrong. It's broken in two spots and it's unraveling. It seems like our dough was way too thick to make a cute bun. They look like sandwich rolls from Vons. They look like slabs of bacon. They look like meat. And we had definitely waited too long after pouring to cut and roll. See, this thing is so freaking warm. They wanted us to go fast. But I didn't know that. They said, wait until semi-hardened. Those bastards. <laughs> Those bastards. So for a second attempt at this hack, we decided to, one, melt in the microwave in the name of speed. Looks good. Yeah, let's do it. Milky. It's milky, let's go. Two, make a longer mold so our dough would be thinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the right size. And three, wait less time before popping and rolling. All right, let's do it. Time to make it the pizza. But sadly, even though we got closer with this one. Roll, bitch, roll. Get out the way. I would not say we nailed it. All right, that's something, maybe. Oh my God. <laughs> that's your mouth. As our rolls were still a bit thick, still a little hard, and did not have that signature cinnamon roll peak in the middle. So for our final try, we found a random YouTube tutorial about this hack from 2012, which, while it didn't propose any exact measurements, did use a method that seemed like it could help. She does do pretty much what Blossom does. Okay, okay, 
Which way are you rolling? Except she does not cut her dough before rolling. No. She rolls the cinnamon roll as a unit. Oh, that's good, it's good. It's tight, soft, like a toyga. And then chops it in half at the end, after kind of like pressing it down in the middle to create some of that cinnamon roll top. All right, yeah, I gotta close that seal and just generally squeeze. Squeeze. So roll, squeeze, then chop. Oh, okay. that, that wasn't in the middle. <laughs> That's okay. You got a, a big boy and a small boy. And this actually seemed to work out a lot better for us. All right. I feel okay about this. Maybe not stellar, but I feel okay about it. <laughs> so we forged ahead with these rolls, adding on the glaze. They kind of paint on the cracks. Like this kind of? I actually think that's working pretty well. Yeah. And squirting on the icing. How does this work? We can make it rain. All right. Okay. It goes foul. Oh my God. Oh, just go All right. for it. Ready? It's happening. And this happened fast. That was fast, man. Give me one more little cursey bus. I'm gonna get an over the shoulder shot. I could do one more. Oh yeah. Now those look delicious. Let's get real. So I guess finally, after a few tries and some alterations to Blossom's technique, we ended up with some okay looking cinnamon rolls. All right. So we've let our cinnamon rolls sit for a day. So now we're gonna try and wash our hands with them. All right, ready? Okay. Get in a lather. Now there were some pros and cons to this soap. I don't know like how to get it. Here, maybe I should use the butt. On the pro side, once I figured out how to hold on to them, I was able to get a lot of lather from these guys. And they also smelled amazing. It smells like the airport. Cinnabons and airports. Name a more iconic duo. However, on the con side, the extra decorations we added on top of the rolls started disintegrating very quickly. Yeah, see, the, the frosting's already coming off and the glaze is completely gone. And we also made a sort of unfortunate discovery. Oh, Tyler, this is exfoliating. Oh yeah? That apparently you aren't supposed to put cinnamon into body products at all. Yeah, there's a ton of grains left behind. It might be spicy. Per Katie from Royalty Soaps, who reacted to this hack in a video, which we unluckily saw after I had already washed my hands with this thing, you should really not put cinnamon into soap. Cinnamon? No! <laughs> no! No! As it could actually burn your skin. No, 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 no. I think I'll be okay after just one wash, but it's not awesome that Blossom is suggesting people use literal cinnamon on their skin without adding any warnings or substituting the cinnamon out when they easily could have. Please use either a brown mica or maybe some apricot seed powder. Shoot, if you wanted to use coffee grounds, you can do that, but do not put cinnamon. So you heard the lady, this hack is not a good idea, at least not without some serious alterations. And based on the amount of trouble we had with it, this is a, a Bass Pro Shop <laughs> flop. <laughs> this is a fish flopping around in a bucket flop. I think it's safe to say that Blossom has set up this hack in a way that makes it nearly impossible to follow, both logistically and dermatologically. Logically. So with an impromptu cinnamon challenge narrowly avoided, it felt like it was time to call it quits. So that was our adventure into clickbait soap hacks. I gotta say, on the whole, these were pretty hard. Like we spent quite a few days trying multiple attempts at mastering these hacks, and even after all that time, we didn't even get them to be that good. Overall, I would say that there are a number of issues with these hacks that make them kind of annoying. Beyond the lack of measurements, which we've already complained about a lot. Those bastards. <laughs> Those bastards. These hackers have a strange inattention to detail across the board, saying things like partially melt, or let semi harden, or use vanilla essential oil when that doesn't even exist. This can also sometimes be kind of unsafe when they say to use things like cinnamon or an entire frond of aloe, spines and all. Stems and all, huh? Okay. <laughs> and all of this annoyingness led to, at least for us, some pretty not great final products. He looks like the mucus from Mucinex. 
Full disclosure, we did try a fourth hack that did not make it into this video, which is this soap cupcake hack from Craft Factory. And though we were able to kind of figure it out, How do you like that? Bada-bing, bada-boom, boom-boom. And make some okay-looking soap cupcakes in like 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, he's just chilling. He's chilling like a villain. The end result of this hack didn't turn out so well either. With a bit of an odd odor, the bath butter has a weird, like, sour smell. Okay. It's a smidge rank. And with little structural integrity. Oh, oh, oh no, oh. oh no, oh no! Oh, oh, oh. Oh no! Yeah, see, it's a goner. As the frosting completely fell apart after just a few seconds. <laughs> that embed is not giving up. That embed is literally the dog in the fire. I mean, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. I guess that's all to say. As for the question we posed at the beginning of this video, I think the answer is no. I don't think you can hack your way to cute looking soap art. I guess there are some of these hacks that seem like they might turn out well, but the ones we tried certainly did not. From my estimation, these hackers just want your clicks and your views, and actually have no intention of helping you make soap art. They probably don't even think you're gonna try. So where does that leave us? I don't know. I guess with three crappy soaps, and pretty clean hands. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button and also that subscribe button in case you wanna see more videos like this. Here's my Instagram if you guys wanna check that out. We post all kinds of updates there in between videos. And with that, I will see you guys a next time.